from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is the Anderson Pens Podcast. Welcome to Anderson Pens Podcast, episode 460 for Thursday, October 13th, 2022. This week we have banter, news, updates, Magna Carta pens, new items from Retro 51, Platinum, Lamy, Sailor, something about cats, a contest winner, a brand new contest, plus something new from Estherbrook that we can't talk about. Hey Steph. What? Where do bad rainbows go? I don't know. Prism. It's a light sentence. <laughs> All right. Today we're coming to you live from the Appleton Fire Station Number One, located here in downtown Appleton, just five blocks away from away from last week's bumper location. That was the Lawrence University Welcome Archway, which I finally found, saw. Ha ha! Did see it. Mm-hmm. And uh, Fire Station One has a large connection collection of past firefighting equipment and memorabilia, and they've converted their entire lobby to uh, like an old timey fire station. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. That's that's fairly close to my house, so that's should good. should go in there sometime. They're nice people. Are they? Mm-hmm. Have you been there? Yeah. There's. We used to bring them snacks. I have a oh, friend had a, close, really? a house oh, right by. Okay. <laughs> All right, and uh, what do we have tomorrow? Yes, and tomorrow is October 14th is National Dessert Day. Woo-hoo. National Dessert Day is celebrated in the U.S. every October 14th. It's a day allowing people to satisfy their sweet tooth by indulging yeah. guilt-free in their favorite desserts, plural, desserts. Plural. So, so we are giving you permission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you know Eric has a motto regarding... Um, uh, dessert that he lives by? I had heard that rumor, but you know then what the he, is? he asked me and I got it wrong, so. If it doesn't have chocolate, it's not a dessert. See, I thought it was there's always room for ice cream. Well, yes, and that too. Well, I guess he's got many models about dessert. Yeah, ice cream, chocolate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, could, I, I want to go back to that, that Frio where we went that one time. Oh, they're so good. Chocolate and. Ice cream and all yeah. sorts of stuff. Then it's officially so. dessert. Apparently, I don't eat much dessert because I get sherbet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we have a pen in my pocket this week, so we're going to try to guess that at the end of the podcast. It should be fairly easy this week. What type of pick do you take with a surfer? A surfy. Do you know what just came in? Ooh, so many things, but... <laughs> no, that was... I'm sorry. That was wrong. That was wrong. <laughs> Uh, because a lot of things came in last year, but you know what just came in new product for us? Ooh. Magna Carta. They're so pretty. Yes. So these, uh, we talked about them on uh, the Sunday brunch. Mm-hmm. That's coming. That was last Sunday, menu 18, uh, published on October 9th. We talked about each pen in depth, but we're just going to kind of go through and, uh, and and show you what they are here. Uh, the Denima. Uh-huh. This one is super cool. Uh it's got a that denim. Looks like it feels neat. Yeah, yeah. it's a denim. Uh, um, it's a Macarta, essentially. Oh. Um, it's a Macarta material made out of denim. So it's, it's just really a soft, and it's got this cool, really oh, a neat cool. pen. These all have stainless steel nibs. Uh, they're all, nibs are all made in house. They all come with ebonite feeds, which is super cool. Uh, and this one is a cartridge converter, but really a neat, neat looking pen. So if you like Macarta, there's the denim. And it feels awesome. So it th- does, yeah. Maybe this is just me revealing that I don't know what Macarta means. Does that mean that it's layers of denim mixed with like a cream? Uh, I, it's something like that, yes. I don't know exactly mm-hmm. how they're made, but yeah, they're, they're, they're fused together and then you've got a nice, it's a soft, yeah. it's a very it's like plastic. interesting, yeah, it's a very it's, interesting feel. It feels great. It feels like it would really like absorb like yeah, like your moisture. Yeah, and yeah. there will be more colors in this pen coming out. So right now it's available in this this kind of a denim denim blue. Cool, so cool. We've got that one next up. Uh, the elements. Uh, these are pretty super neat. Uh, there are three of them. There is the water, the sky, which is green with the black cap, and then and you the have earth? the earth, which sort of goes with your sweater. Oh, I, totally uh, I like that one a that. lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but these have nice acrylic resins, and these are pneumatic fillers. So you take the blind cap off, pull that out, put it in ink, push down, and then there's a little hole there. See? Gotcha. So this is so, a this is a pull it out ink push. This down is a one. pull it out ink push down one, and uh, and they're super cool. Uh, I like them. 
uh, pneumatic fillers. The blue, look at that, that lapis color, really super nice. Super matching, pretty. Matching sections. Mm -hmm. I love it's not quite flat, or it's it's it is a flat top, but yeah. it's like a little yeah, it's tapered. a little bit yeah, a little bit of a Just taper to it, and, it, and it's good size. These are all uh, really pretty, pretty healthy sized pens. Uh, yeah, I was surprised they didn't feel too big for my hand. Yeah, yeah, and, and most of a lot of them don't post, so uh, they're they're not overly large actually in the in the in the hand. Like you couldn't can't post this one. So this one is the the Mag Eight Hundred. And this love is that the blue swirl. and orange, isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the inside cover of a vintage book. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or Syracuse University colors for you Syracuse folk. Oh. Um, this uh, this one, the Mag 800, has a number eight size steel nib with, of course, again, the ebonite feed. So it's a monster nib, look at that. Yeah. I love this, super, super cool. So Mag 800 comes in the blue and the orange. I totally and this forgot one, about the ebonite feed, but they just keep getting cooler. Yeah, yeah because nobody else does that. Uh, this one is the green and blue, and you can see there's even some light patches. This is the green and blue Mag 800. Yeah, I'm having trouble deciding which swirly one is my favorite. It's nice, it's nice. So that's the Mag 800. So about the same size as the, the elements, but just in a, a, a cartridge converter. And these can okay. be used as uh, eyedroppers too. Oh, neat. These are eyedroppers. Very neat. Uh, the next group is uh, a part of a, a series called the Libertatum series. Um, this one here is the Baron. So it's got kind of a, it's sort of a flat top, but it's got a little peak at the top, which is kind of neat. Uh, it comes in two different models. You can have that one. Great. Look at it. Um, also matches my shirt. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that that resembles a really, it does a really pretty good approximation of the old Omas uh, Arco uh, material. It's got a little bit of shimmer to it. Um, when you uh, when you look at it in the light, little pieces pop out of it. Yeah, it's like it's like you're, you're mesmerized. You're speechless. I am. I am. I am <laughs> trying to find the words, and they're they are falling short. It's like it's like what wood grain looks at and wants to be when yeah, it grows up. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so super beautiful. cool. And and it, what I love about uh, how they make these pens is everything lines up. So the section. And so these have these have the large and then thin thin kind of strips there the way they've, they've they've cut this and Everything lines up the section lines up with the barrel and the barrel always lines up with the cap So all these lines are always your OCD doesn't have to worry about being this does bring joy Yeah, so I was I was playing with one the, the first time I, I I took a look and I was trying to get it to thread wrong, mm -hmm, so it didn't mm -hmm, line up mm -hmm. and I couldn't do it. Some of them have two 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 thread starts, two thread starts, uh, so you can get it to go you know, one way or the other, but uh, they always line up. So this one here is uh, what we call the Prince, and this one is uh, is actually about the same size as a Sailor King of pen, but a beautiful material. Yeah, I love that shape. Yeah, and again with the number eight size ebonite nib, so. And those stripes, though. Yeah, stripes, little roller clip, so it easily, easily goes into your pocket. So I'm real excited about these, um, and uh, they're available right now. So and there will be more, and uh, there are more models, and there will be more colors coming. So this is a great start. Wow. I'm excited to see them all. So you can check out the Sunday brunch from last week, uh, October 9th, and we talk about each pen in depth, and there'll be a link in the video below. Steph, we. <laughs> That was good. That was good. Um, we got we got some new Preppy Waz just came in. This is Preppy Wa, the second round two. Round two. Wah wah. So what do we have here? You can you? Right. Uh, do we know? So, let's so see. We've there's got, six new ones. Yes. Um. Let's see if we can match them up. So, so we've um, got Hanabashi Kiko. I think uh, you have that one. Is that this one, one here? That's the our, navy blue body yeah. with. Uh, White flower. Oh, and hexagon nope. design. No, navy nope. blue. That's that there one. There. Oops, go. sorry. Oops, sorry. Even even. And darker. hexagon design. Yeah, yep. there yep. we go. So this is our Hanabashi Kiko. Okay, and Which. then we've got Sei Gaiha. There's the one. There's a bright blue. There we There's go the with the scalp. Blue. I was gonna say that's got the, the scalp design. So and these all have the the, the transparent caps. Uh, next one, Ichimatsu. Ichimatsu. I bright I green body with the black square design. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's cool. Very cool. I like that one. Yeah. I think I had a pair of chucks with that pattern on a pair in of high school. Chucks? Nunchucks? Those uh, shoes. Though. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Rokomon? 
Is that how you pronounce it? General, uh, a gentle yellow body with a white triangle design. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Sakura Tate Waku. Is that yeah. right? That sounds... uh, pink, gentle pink body with a white flower in wavy line design. Oh, that, that is, that's pretty. cute. That's a cute one. Very pretty. Uh, and Yagasuri, a black body with a gold graphic design. It looks kind of like a, does that look like a tulip? Oh, Almost. Yeah, it looks like a... Like a tulip or, or like something. a fletching from arrows. A fletching from arrows. <laughs> okay. Fletching, that's my $5 <laughs> word for the day. Um, so the fletching pen and the rest uh, all come with uh, uh, transparent caps and stainless steel fine nibs. These are all available in fine nib only. And they come with a blue-black cartridge. And they also will fit the platinum converter, which is available separately and is proprietary. Oh, so cool! Cool new was uh, just came in, and these are limited uh, limited editions essentially. Uh, so when they're gone, they're gone. So right. super cool. Very cool. Very cool. Next up. Next up. We've got the Retro 51 Spooky Silhouettes. That's another USPS collab, I think. Yeah. And uh, they look super, super pretty. Um, they're a new pen for the Halloween season. The, the design features a black silhouette and some of the spookiest Hallow's Eve creatures backlit by iconic Halloween colors. <laughs> this rollerball's design is modeled after the 2019 stamps created by Tyler Lang for the post office. And those stamps are a cat with yes. an arched back between, beneath a raven perched on a branch against a yellowish green background. And that's the that's, one that glows in the dark. Uh, that one, only that one glows in the dark? I think it's that particular stamp with oh, that yellow nice. green background. That nice. pops out so you, all you can see is a cat. Great. Yes. They have chosen well. And then they've also got two ghosts on an orange background, a spider and a web against a red background, and three bats against a purple background. Now why wouldn't the ghosts glow in the dark? I don't know. Maybe they Maybe do. It does. But I don't know. We don't have we don't have them in our hands yet. So not yet, not yet. But when they do, we'll have to turn off the lights and check <laughs> it out. <laughs> and it's a limited run, so that's a hundred uh, one thousand and thirty one pieces. <laughs> Almost started you, a panic. You there. missed a zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, this pen has the edition number graved on the top ring, so each one technically unique, and they're topped with a spider Ooh, on the a finial. Spider. Mm -hmm. Nice. And that usual uh, top neural twist that the Retro 51s always have, which is yeah, yeah. one of those it's satisfying super twists. easy. Yeah, really good grip. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, comes in that commemorative USPS packaging tube. So those will be here any any day now. So. <laughs> All right, what else we got? This one we have here. Lamy Safari Breast Cancer Gift Set. Uh, so this set, uh, so again this year... Uh, Lamy is doing a promotion with um, uh, with a, a particular set uh, color, and then they're donating uh, donating a portion of proceeds to uh, the Susan Coleman uh, Foundation uh, for Breast Cancer Research. And this year uh, we have the uh, pink Lamy Safari, so it's the Safari pink. How appropriate! Yep, uh, available in extra fine, fine or medium steel nib, and it comes in the package with eight cartridges, one each of green, blue, black, turquoise, violet, blue, red black and mango. Uh, and uh, the Z28 converter, uh, if used for bottled ink, is available separately. doesn't come with it, but You've what a- you got a couple cartridges to get through first. What a, what a cool little set. Uh, I love these sets. They give you, you know, especially if you've got somebody who uh, you're trying to get interested in fountain pens, you've got all these cool colors. You've got a nice little gift box. So th this is, uh, and especially with Christmas, is just around the corner. Uh, the safari pink and of course we also have those in a couple other colors we've got vista and uh, charcoal that's as well right, too. That's so, right. uh, but lamy safari the breast cancer gift set uh, is now in stock very cool you can buy a gift and give a gift at the same time <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have uh, a new sailor pro gear uh, that is coming soon and it is probably going to be here by the time this podcast is published very soon uh, the Sailor Pro Gear Winter Sky. Mm -hmm. uh, this special edition pen captures the feel of a fresh winter's morning with the gentlest of lilac colors set against a frosty white gold accents in a solid 21 karat or 14 karat gold nib with rhodium plating. It has a slated for a September release. Uh, it's already October. 
uh, the winter sky will be available in a slim with 14 karat nib or standard with 21 karat nib and also a king of pen with a 21 karat nib. Slim and standard come in extra fine, fine, medium fine, medium, broad, zoom, and music, the standard seven, and king of pen, medium, and broad. I like this color. It's, it's a, a nice, really... nice looking pen, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, I'm excited to see it in person and see if it's one of those kind of like glowy, just like bright but mm -hmm. subtle colors. And I mean, I wonder, I wonder if the winter sky is a little slower to get here than than we expected. If that means actual winter, winter will we'll, get slow. Yeah. I hope so. I really <laughs> hope so. <laughs> I think that's an omen. I'm saying it's an omen. Uh, but this is a third. This is a third in the series, the, the sky series, uh, midnight, autumn, and winter. Uh, but it looks good. I can't wait for this to get here. And of course, any excuse to have another King of Pen in the store uh, <laughs> is is good for me. So sign up for the back and stocks on those. They should be here shortly. Uh, if it's in your yeah. pocket, it's still in the store. As long if, if as your pocket's right. in the that's store. That's right. That's right. Uh, and speaking Sorry, of sailor, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of sailor, we're just gonna go right past that. Uh, there's a new. There's also another new one that's coming out. Uh, which could be here by the time this publishes. And why don't you talk about this one? All right. Yes, we've got the, the Simply Metallic series on the Sailor 1911 ringless yes. pen. It's a cool idea yes. that I'm excited to yes. see coming back. So this uh, 1911 ringless Simply Metallic pens are, uh, they they are metallic acrylic. <laughs> so they, the, the, the acrylic shines like metal. However, there is not a metal trim band. Nice and clean yep. and, and, a simple design, which suddenly makes the name make sense. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, so it's pearly metallic light ca catching colors uh, in blue, red, and gray, all feature impressive black ion plated 21 gold, uh, 21 karat gold nibs that not only look incredible, but write like a dream. As the name suggests, this series foregoes the cap ring in order to highlight these new metallic colors for a crisp, fresh look that is sure to turn some heads. And uh, nib size is available. But it will be fine, medium, fine, and medium. So this is a 1911 large. So this is going to be like the old uh, Epinard. Oh. Remember the Epinard was the first one that came out, at least mm -hmm. for U.S. Uh, exclusive with the with the ringless design. So uh, these are super cool, and you know uh, that that simply red is almost like a. It doesn't look red to me. It looks more I like a. Say, it looks kind of purpley, purpley. Like yeah, burgundy. It's really maybe? a neat looking color. So. Uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing these when they get in. It's going to be another case of uh, you, you got to see these in person. The, 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 the pictures aren't going to do them justice. But uh, I, like, I like the way they look. I'm excited for them to come in. I'm excited to, to see how that black ionized trim works, too. Yep. It should look nice. And we've also got the Lucky Cat 2003, 2023 2003? wall calendar. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's in your drink? Right I know, there? right? I cannot talk today. <laughs> Lucky Cat calendar. There for 2023 hmm? that should be uh arriving today thursday and we expect that we'll probably I sell think they're out gonna, today they're gonna sell out today so we had a s s small amount that we were able to get and it was a special mm -hmm. order uh but so if you've got a back in stock notification keep an eye on that yeah, email yeah, yeah absolutely mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm taking one you're taking one yep. justin are you grabbing one eric, mm -hmm. eric might be i don't know so he'll be um, he'll be jealous once he sees mine one day do you use other. use calendars I, I love my wall calendars. Love your wall calendar. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm getting better about using using portable using calendars. Using portable whole <laughs> uh, we, we, we Lisa and I always had a, a calendar in our, our kitchen. And um, it's just nice to have something up there. We don't usually really write much on it, but I like to have it there. You can see a view. But we every year in, in, uh, in December, we always end up going to a bookstore or whatever and trying to find one. And so this came out and I said, this is this is it. I don't have to sit there and, and, and sort through the, the calendars at the bookstore because this one is perfect. So Yeah, I don't know what it is about that particular design. I saw it and I was like, gotta have it. What, uh, let's see, what does the website say? It says, uh, this is the most adorable 2023 calendar a cat lover will find, measuring roughly 10 by 14 inches. This calendar features assorted cartoon cats shown in outdoor settings in different exercise and sporting activities for an interesting, entertaining, and darn cute cat calendar. We highly recommend this. So, new calendars coming soon. Why was the gift late to the party? It was all wrapped up. Yes, That's, this okay. last week contest, uh, we asked 
uh, how many pens you own with nib sizes other than your preferred nib size. Getting complicated this this week. I was gonna we, count. We made them do math. We made them do. They uh, they rose to the challenge. There's extra credit though, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, what percentage of your entire collection is that? Which which made it a lot easier okay. for me to compile these statistics. Okay. What are so, what are our stats? We found that seventy percent of our respondents said that more than half of their collection is their preferred oh, nib size. It is okay. Give or take. And, however, almost everyone claimed that their collection was about half of their preferred size and half other sizes. Some people were a little bit over, some people Mm. were a little bit under, but the like 40% to 60% my favorite nib size category was definitely our biggest. But there was another big cluster at the high end with 33% of responses (laughs) reporting preferred nib concentrations of 80% 80%. or higher. I wanted to make a box and whisker plot, but Eric wouldn't let me. It was maybe overkill. <laughs> a what? <laughs> uh, so that's that's interesting, but it's not it's not surprising, I suppose. Um, I probably have more pens that aren't my preferred nib size, but I think part of that is the fun of you know you, you I think you go through you can go through cycles where I, I like fine nibs for a while, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm looking at mediums, and then I'm doing broads, and then I go back to fine. So you know stubs. Yeah, that was something I noticed about a lot of the people that had a, a, a lot of the like. Less than half of my nibs are my preferred nib size category. There were a lot of people that were like, well, you know, I used to like fine nibs, but now mm-hmm, I've realized mm-hmm. mediums can be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mediums are really cool. They are. They oh, are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do we got? Some comments? And yeah, it's a couple, couple comments to highlight this week. So Jennifer C. said, I thought I was a broad nib kind of girl with about 33% of my collection having broad nibs. But Brian brought up a good point, actually, about (laughs) Japanese nibs. And most of my favorite broads are Japanese nibs and functionally mediums to our Western standards. So since I'm apparently a stealth medium person, (laughs) welcome to the club. (laughs) 58% of my collection are mediums. Who knew? Apparently subconscious me collecting mediums from hither and And yon. Just calling them broads. All right. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. And Annie Ritter said that 69% of the pens that she owns are not her favorite nib size, or not her favorite size nibs, which is interesting. And she's glad that she asked that, that we asked that because she likes data. She likes data, yep. Me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do we got from Kevin Butler here? He says, I have only two fountain pens and both are medium, which is my preferred nib. Of course, listening to you, Brian, Steph, and Lisa is probably going to cause that number to go up. I hope so. <laughs> Man cannot live on two pens alone. <laughs> and Summer Pearls said, What an enlightening question, Eric. I just returned home to discover that exactly 50% of my nib sizes are other than my preferred nib medium. 28 pens out of 56. Another wonderful podcast, and this time instead of watching during lunch hour at work, I was on vacation, so I couldn't count until I got Ooh, home today. Nice. But congratulations on your vacation. Vacation. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And I had to create a new category just for you. Fifty <laughs> <laughs> percent on the dot. On the dot, yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, shout out to uh, Farah Farid, whose daughter Ooh. is going to be in the class of 2026 at Lawrence. Nice. Class of 2012 here. Don't tell anyone. When did the classes get so far 2026. ahead? 2026. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that that means that you're. Don't tell. Don't tell. They already, they already did math last week. <laughs> Class of 2026, awesome. So we're going to see you here in the store during Parents Weekend. Yes, welcome. Good school. Um, Right, sorry, I got distracted. (laughs) Got me excited. I have mostly medium and broad nibs, she continues, since that is in my comfort zone. Last year, into this year, I decided to try fine and extra fine, and I was surprised that I enjoy them. I have 10 or less with with those nib sizes. Percentage? Not good with math, sorry. Ha ha ha. Happy half birthday, Eric. That's okay. Now you won't figure out how old I am. I I might be able to figure that out. Uh Uh-oh. Well, we'll we'll, we'll keep that a secret, though. John Toledo says, happy half birthday, Eric. Coincidentally, we share a birthday of sorts. Tomorrow is his 306th out of 365th birthday. (laughs) Okay. I checked right. that fraction. It is fully reduced. It is fully reduced. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> and we have a winner? We have a winner. The closest closest mm-hmm. guess? Yes. Is Justin Martin. Eric, good to see you. He writes, and Mr. And Oh, nope. Try again. He writes, Eric, good to see you and Mr. Anderson both on the podcast. As usual, I had to break up my credit card upon viewing. 
<laughs> As regards the contest, my preferred nib size is fine. However, 48.15% of my pens are nibs other than fine. That percentage is for nibs currently in hand. If I include pens and nibs in or, on order, that percentage of nibs other than fine is 44.44%. <laughs> By the way, props to Dave for the excellent mm. packaging and fulfillment on my recent order. He was such a help when I visited the store this summer. Indeed, awesome. props to Dave. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Congratulations, Justin. Uh, please write to eric at andersonpens.com and he'll get the $20 credit placed on your Anderson Pens account. Fabulous. And now for the new contest, which Magna, Part Magna Carta pen appeals most to you? How about you? Which one do you like? Oh. You can only pick one. This swirly one. The Mag 800 swirly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go with the Prince. Uh, only because this pen didn't exist until we made it happen. So, uh, and it looks like a king of pen. It's cool. That is really cool. And what is not to like about these big eight, number eight nibs? Mm -hmm. I just, this is cool. So this is my choice. Yeah. So you've got that. Uh, you've got the Mag 800 and I've got the uh, the Prince. And uh, awesome. Let us know in the comments uh, which one you like. And one comment will be chosen at random to win a $20 credit to your Anderson Pens account. All right, coming soon, something new from Estherbrook that we can't talk about. There I was be, about to ask what it was. It will be released tomorrow, Friday, October 14th. <gasps> we can't say anything more than that, uh, but we'll be sending a mailer out uh, tomorrow announcing the new something, so be sure you've signed up for our newsletter and you will be among the first to know. Mm -hmm. And you can subscribe to the newsletter at the bottom of any page at andersonpens.com. I'm trying not to say anything. Oh, shoot, I failed <laughs> why don't we do that all right well, thank you guys for joining us today tune in next time for more talk about pens ink and paper you can check us out on social media as anderson pens and don't forget there's a store in chicago where is that store that's on the ground floor of the palmer house hilton and they're open seven days a week seven days a week you'll see mm -hmm. lisa there uh, website is chicago.andersonpens.com don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and the pen in my pocket Dun, dun, dun. I thought I had this last week, but it is the Rodden uh, Vanishing Point in the, uh, which one is this, the, the Stripes pattern? So pretty. It's nice, isn't it? That Rodden, though. Love the Rodden. So that's mm -hmm. the pattern of the week. So. Bye, guys. <laughs>